back to the Iowa Dairy Farm. It's the second week of June here, and we are getting ready to put some grass into a silage bag and let that ferment. We did our first cutting here on the other side of the barn at Hayfield, and a few other updates is we actually have cows now. So believe it or not, our dairy farm has cows. So we have, I believe, 60, I think is exactly what I did, 60 Holstein cows. We got 10 heifers in here, which they'll obviously here soon translate into a milking cow. So we got 10 of them there. And then the rest are all thrown out around here. So we did change the fence up too. We put an electric fence here around the barn. Um, we were having some issues with the other one. The barbed wire just wasn't working, so we took that basically that line out that went straight across and we put the electric up here seems to be doing a lot better holding the cows in and uh, we also have another 19 or 20 over there in that little pasture area that we can just kind of isolate what cows were milking what all that stuff so we are officially full of cows and we plan on getting a lot more bale wise being that we haven't done our silage yet um, our corn silage, you know, our silo is actually empty. We are getting bales from a neighbor. We're buying some bales, and uh, he's helping us out a lot. So they're very, very cheap. It's not breaking the bank at all. And if you can see here, like I said, we did cut our first crop of the hay here on the other side of the barn. This field was ready to go here shortly after we did the waterways. So I took the disc bind in here with the 1206 case and I ended up cutting it, raking it, and now it's ready to be picked up with the chopper. Well, that's what we're gonna do today. I got the Massey, the front loader is already off it. So we're gonna be using that um, to pull the chopper and chopper box. We're only gonna use one being that we are by ourselves today. Um, the help that we had earlier today left and uh, but now, it's just us so I, I won't have that extra help so it's gonna be a little bit difficult I'll just have to run the I guess run the chopper box back and forth myself so I'm gonna go ahead and get things hooked up here and then start heading out to the field so we can start picking that up it's not gonna be a whole lot all right we got things hooked up here and now we're gonna head out Alrighty. We're gonna start with this first wind row here. Right, let's see if we can uh, get things folded out here. There we go. Just like that. Should be good. Hard to see in that cab. All right, looking good. It's going in. I can see it filling in the back. Really a good thing. This is going to be a little difficult. The chopper box might hit that corner fence. I'll come back and pick up that little bit there. Barely made that. So yeah, I'm assuming we're only gonna get maybe two and a half loads here, probably. Most likely what we'll get out of this field here. We are planning on doing more hay. Trying to get some more of that so we can get bales because this little patch of field here ain't gonna do it I mean really even the waterways we've got 11 bales doing the waterways but we're gonna take some of that away when we expand the fields over there so we're gonna need more of that land so we're gonna hopefully it'll be probably I would say uh, next spring we're gonna do some 
rethinking on some ground here and what we want planted and uh, stuff like that. So we're definitely going to be looking into that and maybe even consider doing some leasing. There's some ground that's right across the road that's actually pretty good ground and uh, we can lease that fairly cheap. We don't need to buy it. We just lease it and pay that small fee a year. I, mean, I think it's a total of 10 acres, 10 or 11 acres, I think, that's hay ground over there. That would be nice just to lease that and pay that eight, 900 a year, I think it is, and have that. That actually pays off, that'll pay itself off pretty fast. So. And then our other plan is to, for straw, we want to harvest the corn silage here in a couple months. And then we are gonna be drilling wheat right into there. The only downfall with that is we have to run to town and we can lease a drill for fairly cheap. We're looking at a couple hundred bucks to lease it for a couple days. So we're gonna end up doing that because we don't own one. And we want to basically plant that and then we almost might be able to get two crops off if we can get it planted by October and then harvest it in June we might be able to put something in there yet and harvest that later in the fall so we'll see but we want to do that so we're not relying on buying straw bales all the time If I wasn't getting such a good deal, I probably wouldn't be doing it now, so. Yeah, the corn is looking good. Being the second week of June, growing pretty good. We just had a rain shower here shortly after we cut this, so. But it wasn't nothing, nothing too crazy, so. Where about it? It looks like we're about full. Back there. Once it stops going in there. There it is. So I think what I'm going to do is grab the 1206. I have a hook up to the disc line right now. And I think I'm just going to go grab that and then use that to haul. So I don't have to worry about keep disconnecting this PTO here on this harvester, so. All right, let's see if she starts. There we go. Back up the disc bind here. Park it there for now, because I'll end up using it here again soon, but I want to clean it off before I do that. So what, almost four wind rolls I picked up on that load, just about. I said it'd be about two and a half loads, I would say. Which if we up our cows, we're gonna wanna make sure that we have enough land for doing silage and stuff like that because the feed demand's gonna go up. See if this works now. All right, let's try this. Back up a little bit. There we go. You can see the bag now. So that was the one thing with this egg bag here. It actually just goes, the bag goes backwards. Usually I would park the tractor back farther and it would just push the tractor ahead. You wouldn't have to worry about that, but it's kind of doing the opposite, which I guess it works, so fine. 
but this unload speed is very slow, so it's going to be a minute unloading this sucker. Yeah, it's been a few minutes now, and it's really coming down now. Get bought empty here. the bottom there we go All right like that there's one all right back at it See how much more we can get. come through and pick up this little bit here. Well, we got about, looks like four? Maybe four or five wind rolls left. Which was expected. I'm not wasn't planning on having a whole ton of silage here out of this, so but it should be just enough. Yeah, and then these are smaller here, obviously, because the end of the field there. It looks like we're about full, so not quite a half one after this. Start this middle one here. There it is. All right, I'm gonna go drop that off by the tractor, and then uh, we'll haul that one in. So yeah, we won't even have a half one. We'll see how many tons we actually got. Now these are bigger chopper boxes too than I would normally run. And we are filling again. Model A does a really good job. We actually uh gonna be running the brush hog on that tractor. I 
well, I don't know what you're doing there, but I don't like it. Oh, that's a beauty there. And the silo there, the 80 foot silo, we will be filling that with corn silage. Well, if you're wondering why we're doing the bag here, we only have one silo. See it pushing back there. Put that back in gear there a little bit. Put that back in neutral. There we go. Keep in neutral. Alright, the last few wind rolls here. That is it. And when we run second crop too, we could always fill another bag. If we really wanted to, we could do the waterways so we'd have a little bit more. But I kind of want to do some more bales instead of doing this. Uh, just because I can feed the bales out either small, square, or round. I can feed them out. Now in the barn, I'd like to do the really small square bales. That's more ideal for doing, um, throwing out some of that in the barn. But when they come out in the pasture, throw them a couple round bales and stuff like that. So feed them corn silage when they're in the barn. But it won't be long, we'll have corn silage too, so, and we'll have plenty of that. Ah, I missed that. Gotta get back. I gotta get that, that's gonna bother me. But yeah, field's looking good. With the first crop being cut off and looking pretty good. So we'll see exactly how much we ended up getting here. Hold the pipe. Let's fold that up. There, just like that. We'll go and load our last little bit in the chopper box here. I gotta get the 1206 too. I think I'll park this right here for now. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Oh, great. That was the last of it. So it looks like we got 57 tons of grass out of that one field. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. And uh, I think that'll last us a lot longer. When I'm... So we'll be able to work with that and then do a little bit of other stuff and not use as much. I think we'll be okay. Well, this is always a challenge back in the chopper box up. Huh? But other than that, I think we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to put the Model 8 away and uh, disconnect that. And then uh, do evening chores here. 
that's going to wrap it up. Also, we're going to keep going here and watch the struggle. Alright. Disconnect that like so. Alrighty. Yeah, that'll wrap things up here, and I'm going to put things away, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.